All right. Ten year olds in the way. That's why I sit in the back. Yeah, you're my way big man. So, today we're going to talk about materials. So, so far I've just changed color by clicking on it, going to properties, and picking a different color off the list, right? That's the way we've done so far, just changing colors while we're working on it. But that doesn't really look really good when we render it. So if we press F9, that'll give us a render. That'll run the renderer and show us what we'll actually get when it outputs. So that's not too much. You can see it's kind of got some basic lights on it right now. It's got kind of a light right here. And it'll do that until you put one light in. As soon as you put a light in, it'll turn off the default lights and it'll use your, use your lights. <clears throat> um, so some things on materials won't show up very well with the default lighting because of how it's positioned. Um, and so in, I think, next week or the week after, when we talk about lighting, then you'll be able to adjust it and see how that affects it also. Uh, but you should be able to get some, some things going. So <clears throat> how often do you think you do the F9 to, to the render? All the time. Every time you make a change, you hit F9. Because it, it might show you kind of what your material is kind of going to look like in, in here, but until you hit F9, it's not going to show you the, 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 the texture or anything like that. And even the pattern won't be exact. And so if you want to see what it's going to look like rendered, you have to hit F9. And so usually that's a lot. And so if we turn on render setup right here, So in this box here, you've got your sizes. And so this is what size is going to render whenever you hit F9. And so it's kind of good to set this low to begin with. <clears throat> and then um, when you get to the final, then increase it up high. If you have this set up to, I don't know, 1200 by 1600 or even higher than that, every time you hit F9, it's going to take a long time. So set it 640, 480. If you want it real quick, do like 320. And it's just going to do it real quick. But I usually like 640. Okay. Um, you can kind of see what it's like also. Um, you can see we also have some, some preset sizes. So if you know you're going to do an HD, you can tell it you're going to do it at 720. We're going to do a 1080, and it, it knows the aspect ratio for you. Um, when we get to cameras, we'll, we'll work on that also. It's more on, on framing it. But for now, so if I just hit F9, it's going to take a little bit longer than it was a minute ago. Just a little bit. And all I did was increase the resolution. Right now I have no materials and no lights, and only two objects. <clears throat> so that's why you should like to just keep it low to begin with, at least while you're working on it. You can always increase it later if you want to final, or if you want to do a real spot check or something that's really high quality. Once you think you've got it, do a real high quality one, check it. Uh, okay. Any questions? All right, so I'll turn that on. Also, some other things in here. <coughs> this assigned renderer. We've got a couple of different types of renderers, different processes that does do it. Right now, we have mental ray turned on. Um, mental ray. We can also do the scan line. It goes faster. But not all the things show correctly. Um, there's some materials that we have and some lights that have to use mental ray. Um, and this eye ray is a new one too. So that looks like it's taking even longer than the mental ray. I didn't have color. Yeah, well, it's still going. Which 
one are we going to use for our final? Probably mental ray. Either mental ray or scan line. If you use scan line, you just can't use some of the some of the different materials, and you can't use some of the, the more advanced lighting. This is gonna. So why would this is the because the way it's doing the math and the way it's breaking it down. This makes a higher quality output. Yeah. And I've actually never done this one before, so. I don't know if it's going to show us anything since we don't have materials on it. We'll see. Well, those were just some default colors? Yeah. I just changed the colors real quick on the, on the objects. Okay, come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah see? No color. So, for now, just leave that on mental ray. If you want to make it go faster go to the scan line um, but you'll you'll lose some materials and I'll, I'll show you which ones those are when we get to it um, all right. so right here this button here this is our materials editor and then we have two options we have this one the top one which is the basic option the material editor um, and so you've got different empty things. Here's some that are pre-done. Little previews. <clears throat> so it's kind of got some pre-done materials. You just drag it from here on your object. Your object gets that material. Right now I can't see very much because the real world map size is turned on. So that's an option that in your material, if you have it turned on here and you have it turned on in your material, you can specify the exact size of the materials to be. So if I turn that on and I went into the diffuse map for this, I turn on real world map size. Um, And I told it to be we just type it in. Now it's taking this this pattern and, and making it a twelve by twelve for that pattern. Um, really, so it's two horizontal and four vertical within that 12 inches by 12 inches. If I had an image, <clears throat> that would be that image would be 12 inches by 12 inches. So that's. Um, I'll turn that off. Set so timing back to one. And then you can use this to go back up to the main material. So within the material, we've got a couple different areas. The diffuse up here, that's kind of what the color is and what the pattern is of it. You can see there's a level, there's a color, and then next to the color, there's this little square, and right now it's an image. It means I'm using a map. So I'm not just using the plain color. So if I let's see if I make a new material. Right now, if I just change that diffuse color, I'm changing the color of the object. I can pick on the diffuse, move it over to green. You can see I have three different ways to adjust my color. I can either do it by hue, brightness, and and, and whiteness. So the hue is the color. The blackness is how dark it is, and the lightness is how light that, that shade is. I can do an RGB and alpha. What's alpha? What's the brain's tail? Alpha is transparency. <coughs> well, <no>. So <coughs> you bring it like that, then it's a transparent material. So you can have different levels of transparency in it. And then we also have hue, saturation, and value. 
So depending on what you want, you can use those different things. So like if you're using, if you want to match it to a paint chip out of a, the Pantone book, you could get the hue saturation value value out of that and put it in. If you're wanting to match it to some graphics on a website, you can use the RGB values. And then you can use the, you can do a hex converter from the hex to the RGB for that. <clears throat> or you can use the eyedropper and pick something else. I come down here and pick something that's in this area. So if I just put an image in here, I could grab it. Yeah. Does the eyedropper go outside the actual program? No. No. No, see, yeah, there's it. Okay. But if I dropped an image inside here, so if I put an image down, which I'll show you next, I could I could pick it off of that. Change it to red. Pull it over a little bit. You can see it's kind of changing with it, but that's just a plain block, or kind of a plain block, right? There's there's no detail to that. Does that look realistic at all? Just plain colors look really bad, look really fake. Because nothing's a plain, just one pure color. Everything has some sh little tonal differences, some, some, some value differences. Some, some, something's different about it throughout the thing. Even if this paper isn't just bright white all the way through. <clears throat> and so there's lots of different ways we can address that. So this little box here allows us to add maps to it. Um, and so there's some, the first one is a bitmap. So what's a bitmap? Picture, right? So if I have an image or something that I want to put on it, so let's see. Of course, there's a lot of materials that are pre-done in, in Max, but I'm showing you how to make your own um, so that we can adjust them. So if I pick one of these, like this one, get it. Nice big picture. I guess that's good. I'm going to save it. I'll just go click on bitmap. <clears throat> Where should I probably put, now that I'm starting to, to work with more than one file, where should I put my stuff? In one file that you know where everything is? What? In one file where you know that so, everything is? So, where can I, how can I keep, because I'm going to have my, my max is on file, and I have my bitmaps as a file, so how should I organize all that? Where should I have your yeah, I should make a folder, right? I should make a folder, put everything in my folder. So this might be a good time for me to do that before I start doing stuff. So I'm just going to go to my desktop. New folder. And where did I put that? What would you call it? That's a good question. <laughs> Alternating and break. No, I put it on the desktop. There it is. No. You can copy the whole file instead of just the higher. What was that file called? Alternating and break. There you go. Put it in that folder. Now I'll take this file. I'll save it in that same folder also.
just so it's in the same spot. It's good to have them on the same spot. Um, if you look inside of the My Documents folder, you could also use their kind of a setup. If you look down here, there's uh, there used to a Max Design. It's got a bunch of subfolders within it. Screen assets and stuff. And so they have a kind of their their setup thing that you can use to put stuff in there. That's one way to do it. Another way is just make your own folder, drop stuff in. But keep it organized. So now I'm gonna pick that bitmap. Tell it keep real world real world supplies off. Drag it onto there. Oh. Drag it on there. Nothing's happening. I have to hit this button for it to show up on my part. And this button only affects one of the levels. So if I'm at the top level, it kind of does that. If I go into um, one of the other maps down below, So like if I go into bump map, and I add some noise, for instance, and I turn it on here, now I only see the map for the noise, or for, for this one part of it. I go back here, turn it back on, now I can see the, the main diffuse map. Okay. What's that button called? That's called show in viewport. I think that's what it, the tooltip says if it ever comes up. <laughs> but it's, it's to show the, the material in the viewport. Yeah, it showed shaded material in the viewport. Yep. So, if I hit F9 to render it. Who's still in the tool right? Well, it's thing. It, you put, did you put the noise on it too? Yeah, I still have the noise on it. That's kind of weird. That's probably why it's confused and taking so long. I don't know if you guys can see, but right here, doesn't it look like it's like a raised a little bit right here? I'm not following the brick pattern. That's because my noise for that bump map. Had a had some stuff going on there. <clears throat> and so, and because it didn't match with my diffuse map, that's why it looks kind of weird. But even this, just the text, just the the material on the diffuse map, makes it look like it has some texture on the on the bricks. And kind of how the that that tech that material. That image had some shadows and stuff, kind of made it look like it, it had it. <clears throat> so that's the bit, the image map, or the map. I can also go in, wait for that break. If I right click, I can clear a map. So if I click on that again, the rest of these from cell cellular all the way down to, to wood. Um, these all ones are called pr procedural maps. So they're not going to use an image. They're going to make up it through a, an algorithm and figure out what to put for the material. So some things you want image maps under the bitmap. Some things I like to use procedural maps. I know some people that do everything as image maps. They don't use any, any procedurals. I like the procedurals because then you don't get kind of the, um, ever see where you have an image that is tiled and it doesn't line up quite right and you can see uh, like a line where the tiles go together? Just the image. <laughs> if, you're, if you're not careful with your bitmap, that can happen. Or if you have it repeating a lot, you can start to see a pattern in it. With procedurals, you don't get that as much. So that's why I like to use procedurals more. Um, some things like wood. This wood one down here is horrible. 
<laughs> I never use it. I would rather use a really large image and risk seeing some, some repetition than trying to use that procedural method. It is just horrible. Uh, same thing with this, uh, this Marvel one. I've never really had real success with that. Um, ones I use a lot, noise, smoke, speckle, splat, stucco. Um, those are my main ones. Um, cellular. Um, depending, depending on what, how I want the patterns of the different things to go. So, what I'll usually do, so like this is going to be just, I want it to be looking like it's a solid color, but with just some variation in it. So what I'll usually do is come in and put a noise in. So if I look at the noise, you can see kind of how that is. And so if I look down here, I have a size. If I make that smaller, I kind of get more distortion in there, more, more little things. And I can also add the colors. Or I can put another map in here. So I can have maps within maps. So I'll usually start out pretty, pretty big with this one. And then I'll go into this one and add another noise. <clears throat> so maybe I'll pick... Actually, I'll show you what it's like. Yeah, I'll just go into it. I'll add another noise. So add another noise. This one I'm going to make smaller. So the last one was like 10. This one I'll make like 6. So it's going to be... And then I can add another one. But I'm just going to add this one to make it like that blue for color 1. And... That blue for color 2. See, it's just a little bit different. I go back up to there. Now I can see that in the spots that were black, now it's kind of a mix between those other two colors. So if I go down to the second one and add it again, I could pick, again, a couple other colors of blue. Or maybe I'll pick a little bit different. not looking like it's just one solid block of block. bright plastic. Sure. And you can see that what rendered still wasn't really like that. It's kind of a little bit bigger still. So actually what I forgot to do on that second one. That didn't decrease that size. So if I, if I start tweaking this, reducing sizes, change, changing things, changing colors a little bit more, I can really see how that's going to look. So just to see what it's going to be, let's make it like orange. And You can see it's really not at all like the preview was. Is that because it's in a lower resolution? No. Even if I increase the resolution, it still come out the same. It's just when it estimates it here, it just kind of goes, oh, it's supposed to look something like this. And then when you talk to render, it actually does all the math. So it's an estimate to another estimate. Basically. Yeah. And so that's where it comes in. That you. You always want it to do the render so you can see what it really looks like, not just what this tells you. Some are closer, like the, the tiles. If I did the tiles, this one, those are going to be exact. Especially if I have real roll turn on. 
so it's kind of a lot of trial and error. Try it out, see what works. Um, you can see here there's, right now I'm in this little pull down here. This tells me what type of material I'm using. So the type is an architectural and design material. And within that I have some presets. So I have like a rough concrete preset. They cast some material maps, things with it. So these are really nice. <clears throat> and take a long time to render. <laughs> um, you have a, a thin glass, a solid piece of glass, so it actually bends the light a lot. Um, if we click on that, now we can go in here and we have our materials. Instead of maps, now we have materials. So these are the standard materials that you can use with either mental ray or the scan line. If you want to go down and use these, you have to use the mental ray renderer. Which means these ones are going to take a little bit longer to render, but they're going to look a lot nicer. So remember on, on mine where I had the sphere with the, the, the lights and the mirrors in the, in the back? That was the car paint material. So it can be different colors. So, so you can see you have a base color, you have an ambient color, so the ambient is kind of the, the color that's in the background. You have your main color, the color at the edges, <clears throat> uh, kind of how it's fading, the flake color, the specular. So that's where the light is shining right at it. The, re the reflective color, the dirt color, and how much dirt there is on it. So you, there's different options depending on what type of material you're using. Um, if you just use the standard, you kind of have a little smaller list. You have a lot smaller list. So you just have the diffuse, the specular, the ambient color. Um, you go down here to maps, here's where you can add the, a map for the diffuse color also and change how much it's, it's tied into it. <clears throat> you can change, do maps for the specular, uh, self illuminations if you want it to glow in places. So remember how we did the displacement, we could have the, the white and the black. Here's that displacement here also, so I got something that's flat and put that material on. So, say. Okay, put a displacement map. Of a gradient. If I do a gradient ramp, what that allows me to do is pick where my colors are. I can just kind of add that color in there like that on the displacement map. And this is just a flat plane. Look at how it rendered. If I tell it to show that the viewport, see it's kind of off still. It's still flat. That, that's where it's flat and it kind of goes up. Remember, black is flat, white goes up, or white changes. So, right there where it's a real sharp cut change, it's an actual change there. If I look Even though it's flat. at that flat like that, and render it. So, that's where you can make your, your materials have big changes 
without actually having to model everything, just by putting the maps on it. So if you put a displacement map, it'll change a lot. And you can shoot, you can use this value here to adjust how much to, how much that's affecting. So I could do bump also. So bump is the small texture. Displacement is a big movement. Bump is kind of small. So for the bump, I'll do some noise on it. I can tell it how you want it to break down. It doesn't want to show up today. Um, so you, you can see it there now. So here it well, it's showing, but here I can kind of see the texture. So that's kind of my, my fine texture. So bump, displacement. You do the same thing with the opacity to make some, some clear spots. And you just take it off the check mark to take it off. So, like on that capacity, you do a bitmap. in it. <clears throat> so I can see through the object without actually having to cut stuff out of it. So. Are there any questions? So this is kind of the Everything's here. You have to kind of go back and forth through it. If you want to use the, the other editor, it works the same way. Except you pick a material, you kind of zoom out to that grid. So if I wanted to do a standard material, and I go in with my ambient color, Tell it that I want uh, noise. They so connect noise to the color. And I can go in here and pick which colors I want. And I kind of work it that way. So it's all the same things, just a different interface. So kind of you can decide how you want to do it. Yep. Question. Do you like this way better? Um, I just started using this, did this before we started lecture. <laughs> while, while you guys were getting ready and I was sitting here, that was the first time I ever did it and had anything turn out. Um, on this way though, you can't just drag it to the, there like we did before. So what you do is you have it, you have your material picked, come in here and you pick your material, then you press, you pick 
that, and you press this to assign it to, the, to your selection. Yeah. I think you can use that little circle on the, uh, the right hand side right there, down uh, on the actual versus material, right in the middle. Right? This? No, so no, leave it right there, to the right. This? Right there, yeah, and then you can drag that onto your property. Ah, probably. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> See, I'm still learning. They just put this. They just put this new editor in in 2011. So, I'm still stuck on the old way. Um, but there are the other ones like the ink and paint. So let's see if that works. Oh, yeah. So if you go to additional parameters, then you kind of see what things are. It's kind of a It's got a the ink and paint. It puts that little line there. So it kind of gives that that hand drawn look that looks so. that South Park look to it. <laughs> so, and so here you can kind of put out different things and, and spread it out some more. Um, one of the things with this one is that you're stuck with these things. Um, so you can go in some more or less, but you can't really add new things to it. Um, you could um, I forgot how to do it, but what one, one way to do it is you can click on it and change it to a multi sub object material. Then now each one of these slots is its own material. This is also used. If you have an object that you want to color different pieces of it, different colors, you could have these sub objects be the different colors for the different pieces. So, like if you had a cube and you want the top to be blue and the side to be red and the bottom to be yellow, you could have that this uh, this material here go onto that cube and then assign each face one of these sub objects. Could you or sub material? Could you assign like like you could do it by each polygon, each triangular polygon. You can assign a different one of these. And you can just keep adding for as many of these as you need. Right. And so that's what I'll usually do is I don't run out of this. I'll just grab one of these, make it a sub-object, and just start putting stuff into it. But then I can also use that for, for sub-things so like the monitor. I can do one material for here, another for the screen, stuff like that. And I'd have to make two different pieces. Questions? No questions. All right, so that should keep you busy for a little while. So, start.